Hello everyone, in today's video I am going to be sharing five tips for a successful master's defense. These tips can also be applied to a master's or dissertation proposal. For a little bit of background, I am currently a fifth year PhD candidate. I defended my master's about a year and a half ago and defended my dissertation proposal last summer. So I have compiled all of the insights that I've gained from those experiences to share with you here today. Let's get into it. My first tip is to practice a lot. Ideally, you want to have practiced your presentation enough that you can comfortably deliver it without any presenter notes. A quick anecdote. During my fourth year, I had to give a big department-wide presentation. When I got up there to the podium, I realized that the host had put my presentation into full screen and there were no presenter notes to be found, and I kind of just had to act on my feet and deliver it. Thankfully, I was able to do so without any notes because I had rehearsed that way. So my tip here is to practice the way that you are going to deliver the presentation. If you're going to give it standing, make sure that you spend some time rehearsing standing. Try to practice without your notes so that you aren't reliant on them. And you may even record yourself giving the presentation and watch it back. This is a great way to identify how many times you're saying fillers like um or like. It also allows you to identify areas of your presentation that maybe could be a bit more clear. And it lets you pick out moments where you can naturally pause to take a drink of water or collect yourself if needed. Importantly, knowing the material well actually allows you more freedom to engage. You can focus less on what it is that you need to say next and more on making eye contact with the audience members and communicating your message effectively. My second tip is to wear something that makes you feel confident. You've probably heard Amy Cuddy's expression, fake it till you make it, and that applies here too. I always like to wear something that is classic, timeless, comfortable, yet professional, and most importantly, that feels like my best self. A defense is a really nice time to invest in a piece that you can have forever and wear for many important occasions, and Lily Silk makes pieces that do just that. Lily Silk was kind enough to send me two options that I think are fantastic for any defense at any time of year. So Lily Silk has everything that you can imagine with silk. They provide affordable investment pieces, and they have a wide product range. Today I'm going to show you two top options, but they also make pajamas, pillowcases, bedding sets and more. Milbury Silk has a lot of benefits for hair and skin, but what I think is most relevant to our conversation today is that silk is absorptive of moisture and breathable, which I think are two things that we absolutely need to have during a defense. Silk is a natural temperature regulator, so it helps us to keep heat in the winter when it's chilly and expel heat in the summer when it's hot. So no matter what time of year your defense is, silk is a really practical option. I am wearing one of their wonderful silk tops. It is is unbelievably comfortable. It feels like I have nothing on my skin. I don't want to take this off. I love the stripes. I think stripes are a really classic and timeless option. You just can't go wrong. My second option is a wonderful sweater. I love the buttons on it. I think it's so classy. It's giving Jackie O. <laughs> I think that's a great defense option as well. You can just tell that the quality of these is so nice. When they sent everything, it was packaged beautifully. Lily Silk is also zero waste, environmentally conscious, and they use 100% premium materials to keep their products clean and toxin free. I encourage you to check out their site, see if anything catches your eye, and treat yourself for the special occasion. If you know someone who's getting ready to give a defense, I think this would be a wonderful gift too. I will be sure to link everything down in the description. My third tip is to treat the Q&A portion like it is a conversation. Remember what the purpose of this is. It's to help to strengthen the work and to bring your attention to issues that you may not have considered to this point. The purpose is not to make you look stupid. And I know that that can be hard to believe because that's one of our biggest fears, isn't it, as graduate students, is that we'll get up there and we won't know the answer to a question, we won't look knowledgeable, or we'll say something that makes us look stupid. If you find yourself not knowing the answer to a question in the moment, it's okay. Take a moment, take a breath, and be willing to say that you're having trouble formulating an answer to that question right now, or you need a little bit more time to think about that question more thoroughly. 
Be sure to let the questioner know that it is a valuable question to thank them for it. At the end of the day, your audience has an ego too. And in the same way that we don't want to seem like we aren't knowledgeable, they don't want to seem like they're asking a question that isn't well motivated. So make sure you pay them the same respect that you would like to receive and let them know that it's a valuable question that they're asking, even if you don't know the answer to it. Next, this is a great opportunity to share what it is that you do know. So try to pull some information from your knowledge bank about a related topic, something that is close to their question or something that comes to mind. It's okay to say I'm having trouble thinking about a good answer to that question. However, something that does come to mind for me is so on and so forth, and then share whatever it is that you do know. Just be sure to keep that conversation flowing. And then my fourth tip is to take notes. So ideally, you can have an advisor or someone on the committee take notes for you during the defense. If not, try to jot down notes briefly throughout or immediately after the defense. Take a few minutes to jot down notes that come to mind. The reason being is that it's likely that you're going to want to take some time away from the work right after the defense, and that's okay. It's an exhausting process. It can be very draining. And I remember it took me some time to sort of recover from my master's defense. You've likely been very diligent and preparing to this point. And so it's okay to take a little bit of time to let everything soak in. Having those notes to come back to when it is time to return to your work can be very motivating and also just help provide you with some useful direction when you are ready to get going again. And then my fifth tip finally is that this should feel like a celebration. In most cases your advisors or committee will not encourage you to defend if they don't feel like you're ready and I know that there is definitely variability there we don't all get feedback from our advisors on our work before going into a defense but in most cases it's going to be okay even if you end up having to make some changes to the work after the defense it's not the end of the world and while the defense typically ends up being a big blur do your best to try and soak it up reflect on how far you have come even if you go into that day feeling like you don't know very much on the topic, that's okay, it's not abnormal. The reality is that the more we know about something, the more keenly aware we are of how much we don't know about the topic. And so if you go into the defense feeling like you don't know enough, know that you aren't alone. It's very common, I felt that way too. Don't let that feeling discourage you. Go in there with the intention to share whatever it is that you do know and feel proud of the fact that you've made it through this important milestone. I hope that you found these tips helpful. Comment down below. Let us know what other tips you would suggest to someone who's preparing to defend. As always, thank you for being here. I will link the Lily Silk items down in the description. Be sure to check those out and I will see you in my next video. Bye.